Here in front of me, I have the one and only, very special, Union Square heavyweight drawing paper pads. Um, this is 120 pound paper, acid free. Um, unlike our smooth drawing paper, it's a little bit thicker by about 40 pounds and also isn't smooth. It has a little bit of texture to it, um, similar to the multimedia pad. Um, it makes it, uh, you know, a, a little bit more uh, toothy for things like pastel and graphite and such. Um, and we'll also give you some effects, which I'll kind of show you. But forget all that stuff for right now. I'm about to show you something that blows my mind. One of my favorite things about this pad of paper in particular is the way it's bound. And I'll tell you why. Uh, right here you have a traditional wire bounding, binding, bounding, I don't even know the word. And here we have uh, a, glue, a glue binding, which is not that unique. I mean, you see this all the time. Uh, a lot of books are bound similar to this. But it's a very strong binding. So what that means is it allows you to do like a spread. It'll, it'll like, like a two-page spread of images that you can have this kind of vast, vastness of, uh, of art. Because it is a heavyweight paper, you can apply a little bit more water to it than you would, say, the 80-pound smooth uh, drawing paper. Um, it's still not watercolor paper, okay? It's not stretched and bound, it's not sized, but it won't buckle on you as easily as a thinner paper would. So it gives you lots of options. It will take all your dry media, but it will also take some of that wet media too. So we'll just do some different examples of that. I will grab something new. Um, I've been doing a lot of geometric shapes um, because I'm such a square. Oh, why did I even say that? Forget I said that. Um, I'm gonna just do a circle-ish shape here. I don't have a compass. but something that somebody in passing at a quick look might say, hey, I think that's a circle. And I'm just using some watercolor pencils here. And I'll show you that I can't ever be satisfied with anything that I'm gonna add a little bit more color. So there's actually so much water there, it is pooling on me, and I did not prepare for that. So we're gonna call this seat of your pants art. I live my life by that. Now, as I make the red sun of Krypton, I wanna show you something, okay? Now that is so, wet that I am actually trying to soak it back up into my uh, brush. But because this isn't real art, um, what I'm making here anyway at the moment, what I want to show you is if you turn the page over, it's not buckled at all. You can't even see that there's any water mess going on, on the other side. It, um, but it's so wet it actually dripped over. Uh, that's pretty tough paper. It's thick paper. It's a high quality 120 pound paper. Um, Going back into markers, I had some, uh, I found out I had a vivid purple, and that made me happy. Again, I opened to the chisel, I can't, it's lucky. Um, heavy marker application, alcohol-based marker, these things can bleed on you pretty easily, okay? Now, you will see this on the other page, but it did not leak to the page behind it. So, if you're going to use an alcohol-based marker, just be conscientious. If you want to do one of these nice two-page spreads, the alcohol-based marker will bleed through, okay? Now, if you want to use marker and a two-page spread, you want it all, I would probably suggest jumping to a water-based marker because they don't bleed as bad. And when you use one, they will not show up on the other page. So you can, oh, am I cheating? I cheated, okay. So where you can see here the purple came through with the alcohol-based marker, the water-based marker did not. But again, we're talking about a drawing paper, you know? Why am I going through all these things that it can also do? What about you drawers out there? What about you? I don't care. I'm just kidding, I care. All right, I'm gonna show you a couple different things with dry media. It's got the tooth to it. So we've got some, a charcoal pencil here. It grips it really nicely. I mean, this isn't like sandpaper, but it's not ultra smooth like the Bond layout paper before. It's got a little bit of tooth to it, so it'll pick this stuff up. I do always recommend when working with graphite, especially things like charcoal, um, that you use a workable fixative because it can still smudge on you. 
Also, the best way to show texture is I've got a, a, like a Conte crayon here. And if you do you know, your rubbings, you can, that's really where it will pick up the texture of the paper. So if you were doing um, just a Conte type, you know, like a Conte drawing, and you wanted to show the texture of the paper, uh, and you wanted to make sure that you uh, had texture there, this is the paper to use. Because the smooth would give you a smooth gradient where this will give you those bumps. And this is actually a great way to illustrate without you actually feeling the paper, just the texture that's there. You can see that where the white remains, for the most part, is where you can kind of see just the grain to it. Okay? So what I have here is a hot mess. I'm going to clean it up and uh, see if we have any more uh, pads to demonstrate. I think we do. Stay tuned. Caffeine wearing off. <laughs> the lying. Cut the cameras, yes. <laughs> I'm not allowed to indulge on film.